Tastes better the closer you get to Friday, I'm convinced. It's Thursday. And you know, it's been like two, maybe three weeks since we went to the Book of Romans. You, you, I can't resist. Romans, it's just, oh, it's just chock full of goodness. Oh. Anyway, someday we're going to have a study just on Romans, but that it would be nice to have that in person because there's a lot there. But... It's a good time. Okay, Romans. Chapter 12. We've not done chapter 12 yet. So, add another brilliant writing from the Apostle Paul. Let's just start right at the top. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Wait, worship in spirit and truth. Okay, okay. Do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. That's just two verses, and boy, do we have enough to talk about right there. Um, verse 3 is really entertaining, though, if you want to keep reading. But I'll focus on 1 and 2, because that's going to be fill our time, no problem. Uh, let's start with the beginning there. Presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice. Notice, so in Old Testament, according to the law, to be forgiven of sins, so you presented um, the sacrifice on the altar to give thanks at the time of harvest. The first fruits went to the altar. So Paul is playing with that understanding here of uh, our sacrifice. What do we sacrifice now that we have been saved through Christ? Right? We've been united, we, we worship in spirit and truth, that we've been talking about this week, and Paul is saying, okay, that spiritual worship, that connection with God, how does that connect with the old practices of the people of God from generations before? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. It's how we live, is how we continue to live out the way we worship. So it's interesting. Uh, Paul is saying worship is not just this uh, hour or two on Sunday morning. It's our whole life. It's what we do with our body, uh, everything we, we live, um, how we live our life, how we sacrifice for others. This is how we worship, according to Paul. And then it continues, right? Uh, there's a lot of forces that are against us. Don't be conformed to the world, their ways of, of living, uh, your, your body, etc., but rather be transformed. Right? This is big for Paul. Christ is a the Christ event on the cross and, and, and our co-crucifixion, as Paul write later, it is a transformative moment. Worship and being in the presence of God is transformative. He would know given his, uh, I guess, him being knocked off his horse and blinded and then eventually healed. That would be a worship experience, right? <laughs> it's transformative. And uh, in the presence of God. right? But worship, it renews our minds. So we discern what is right and the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. Jesus commands us to be perfect, like your Father in heaven is perfect. That's another passage in our time. I'm already three and a half minutes. But you can see here, to Paul, worship is not the stagnant thing. It continues throughout our life. Our connection with God continues throughout all of our life. Our transformation continues throughout all of our life. It's not an over and done experience. Rather, we need renewal. Conformity of the world can set in the way everyone else is doing it, right? Oh, that's a lesson in all of our scripture. Everyone else is doing it. Why can't we? Even though we know it's bad for us. It could relate in COVID. I'm just going to put that out there. Right? But uh, through worship, God transforms us. God continues to work on us. The fancy theological word is sanctification. God continues to save us. God continues to uh, free us to live freely. God continues to transform us for the better, to teach us, to instruct us, to work on our hearts and minds. To guide us. Or as Paul says, discern. This is the worship that we're talking about. So we talk about what does it look like to worship in 2020. It's every day. I like to believe these talks that we have together um, every morning or whenever you're watching. Maybe you're a nighttime coffee drinker. Maybe it's an afternoon break. Whatever it is. This is a time of worship together. To hear God's good news. And to be in the presence of God and each other. So we wrap it up. 
tomorrow.